Um, the Fund for Economic Future. As Lori indicated, it's a, one of the great hidden assets of Northeast Ohio is that we have this proud philanthropic uh, tradition. Until the last market downturn, there was about $7 billion of philanthropic money uh, in, in our community. And in 2004, we came together and we said, look, if we're going to fulfill our uh, philanthropic missions, we need to be addressing the issues of the long-term vibrancy uh, of our community. And so we formed the Fund for Our Economic Future, which has now got over 100 different members that range from the traditional foundation names you'd think of, the Cleveland Foundation, Gunn Foundation down in Akron, the, the Knight Foundation, as well as some unconventional names. Uh, the, the universities are members, some counties are members, and things of that sort. Uh, and to date, since 2004, we've raised and deployed about $60 million. Uh, we do grant making, research, and civic engagement. So that's the fund. It's, an, it's not officially an organization, it's a collaboration of, uh, of this uh, foundation community. So, and one of the things we no, have known from the start is, look, we're not trying to be the leader. If we need to lead, we'll lead. But ultimately, the direction of this community needs to be set by our elected officials uh, with a strong second role being played by the private sector and the business community. But for a variety of structural reasons, that's not positioned right now for that so that we philanthropy need to step forward right now and play a larger role than you'd expect. But our goal, our end game, is that the new structures in the community will come together and we'll be able to kind of fade back into the more traditional role you think of a foundation, which is writing checks. Um, the propositions tonight. I'm going to lay out four propositions and we're going to have some discussion, hopefully, uh, along the way. Um, the first one is the assertion that hopefully uh, by now is taken as an article of faith, is that when we think about how we organize ourselves, uh, that we compete globally uh, as a region. But uh, the tricky part is that uh, we're not organized as such. In fact, we have a form of government which is a largely 18th and I guess to some degree a 19th century governmental structure that we're trying to adapt not just to the 20th century, but now we're trying to adapt it to the 21st century. Uh, but the basic unit is the region. And when we talk about the region, and I think this is a, a terrific here, as we've thought about the region, we think about a 16 county area that roughly follows that map that you see there. It's about 4 million people. Um, and if you think of that on a global scale, that basically makes us a contender. Um, you know, alone, with all you know, due respect, Youngstown doesn't really show up on the global scene. Cleveland really doesn't show up uh, anymore. But this is, you start adding this all together and you start saying, hey, we're a real economy um, on a global scale. You say, why a region? Well, it is the way that economies are organizing. That's true in Europe, when you think of Benelux or down in northern Italy and, and, uh, and uh, the, uh, southeast France. That's true in Asia, it's true in Latin America, and it's true here uh, in the U.S. And if you look at the way we behave, it's the way our labor markets are organized. About a fourth of us live in a different county than the one in which we work. It's 24 percent, actually. Um, and then, you know, Fran, I suppose you could speak to this. Organized regions have more clout. That's true in Columbus. We've all heard the stories about those folks from Dayton. They've got their act together. Uh, they, they typically don't say those folks from Greater Cleveland. They've got their act together. Um, and they have more clout in D.C. and we have more clout with private business. When the site selector is looking at a place to land or a venture capitalist is deciding, uh, the organized regions are the ones that succeed. So before glancing off this point, let me just stop and ask the question, do you accept that assertion, and if you do or don't, um, how should we think about regionalism? Something to be feared? Something we can manage? 
Any thoughts?